We're going to play on MLG Entombed Valley, which I believe is exactly like Ladder Entombed Valley, except that we have a neutral supply depot at the bottom of the main ramp. So spawning down here in the lower left-hand corner of MLG Entombed Valley, it is Massacrist. <laughs> and spawning over in the right-hand position is our yellow Zerg player, Eye of Darkness, with only one S, of course. We've had Eye of Darkness a couple of times now. He is actually a, a personal friend of mine, and thanks to Massacrist for letting us pull him out of the Peak of Perfection chat. Um, again, I'm co-founder of Zamboni Gaming, uh, so a big plug to us, <laughs> and a big plug to them. They're the Peak of Perfection clan. You can find us in the Zamboni chat channel. You can find them in the Peak of Perfection chat channel if you're interested in either amateur team. So we do have a TVZ on this map. Uh, which is fairly uh, interesting. Three bases, not that hard to come by. You can get this uh, natural very easily. Break down the rocks, take a third base, and at least for Terran player, this is really easy to fortify. Uh, you can fortify this ramp and this ramp pretty easily and keep the Zerg player at bay. Massacre's nas uh, naturally going for the wall off. Actually, not going to go for a, a depot scout, not wary of any uh, shenanigans. Perhaps expecting a nice long macro game, as uh, <laughs> as we would. I have darkness, meanwhile, just droning up. No pool as of yet. It'll probably be either 15 pool or 15 hatch. Uh, we'll see what he opts to go for. These guys are both platinum league. It should be noted. It's not quite as high as some of the other matches I've casted today. Uh, I have darkness. We do see going for the 15 hatchery, um, <laughs> which is not something he usually do does. He likes to put on a lot of early aggression. Uh, so perhaps trying out something else, uh, something new in, in this practice game. Meanwhile, Massacre's uh, wall-off going to complete uh, with the addition of that depot, and pretty soon he'll have the orbital command up, uh, harvesting out of that refinery, and so we'll probably see a pretty typical build, maybe a reactor hellion. Nothing too out of the ordinary coming from either player. Um, I have darkness... oh. <laughs> I looked on the mini-map and thought this might be two extractors, but luckily, not an ex not two extractors, it is a spawning pool and an extractor, so we'll see some sort of speedling opening uh, from Eye of Darkness, uh, which is another one of his favorite things. <laughs> Massacre is dancing around, and there are plants down the factory, uh, so we'll probably see the reactor come up as soon as he gets 50 more gas from here, and we'll see if, how much pressure he decides to put on with the Hellions. Uh, this Overlord actually going to get in. I believe that's the first bit of scouting from either player. Uh, and both players should be aware, assuming... Whoa. Whoa. Uh, <laughs> yep, uh, so he can see it, so both players should know where the other spawned. And these Marines actually might be able to take it out. The Overlord needs to run away. Oh, no, it's not going to get away. So well done by Massacrist, that actually doesn't supply block uh, I, but it does get close, and we do see actually going for something entirely different. It looks like some sort of one base all in. Uh, there's two barracks, there's a tech lab going down, uh, as well as the factory producing Hellions one at a time. Uh, and there's a starport. Uh, this tech lab might be for the starport, and we could see a banshee opening, but that would be kind of weird given... Uh, where this tech lab is placed. So uh, if a Ling got up here, he would be able to scout it straight away. Although we do see actually nothing being produced right now out of either of the barracks. And there, uh, a Marauder finally started. So this could be really interesting play. We do see another tech lab going down. Uh, so we could see some early pressure put on by bio units, followed up by a Banshee, perhaps. But either way, going to be a lot of units on the one base, and Eye of Darkness preparing very well, getting a Baneling Nest, getting that second Gas Geyser. Uh, has the Spine Crawler up here for some undiscernible reason. And uh, really no map presence by either player. Uh, they actually killed the Neutral Supply Depot. Anything Terran that you can get is a bonus. Uh, spine Crawler's moving down to the bottom uh, of the natural ramp. This drone just chilling out. And the factory moving out from Massacrist. So we will see the uh, a Banshee, and even getting the Engineering Bay on only one base. No Command Center even thought of at this point. And this, uh, an interesting little attack force, just scouting around, making sure there's no Lings or Banelings. 
And I'm not sure... Yeah, Massacre's just now... His only scouting go is going to be this factory moving across the map. And just kind of an interesting unit composition. Uh, Marine Marauder Hellion Banshee. So we could see some sort of really, really interesting all-in from Massacrist. Uh, this factory will get in. Uh, we'll be spotted by this Overlord, but there's not going to be anything that can be used to shoot it down quite yet. The layer about halfway done, uh, so he'll be able to get up those Mutalisks pretty quickly. Meanwhile, we do have uh, Lings running in the front. They're not going to, they can't get a very good engagement here. It does look like they took down a couple of units, but not too many. But look at the resources lost significantly in favor of the Terran player. Now Massacre's moving across the map. Uh, Hellion a little bit over-eager. Uh, but he's going to begin... Uh, poking at these destructible rocks. He might even make another Hellion from this tech lab, or from this uh, factory. Excuse me, while he's putting on this pressure. Um, and it looks like uh, he has been spotted. These moves are going to get in and get a nice round. Uh, this amount should be able to take out the current force. And there he does. Actually pinning these marauders up against the, the factory, and he's going to target down the factory. I don't think this Hellion is going to get out. And Massacre really just needs to cancel and fly this away before it gets set on fire. Uh, but it's a little too late for that. So this factory's going to go down. The Hellion, not too long for this world either. And I have Darkness doing a good job defending that little bit of aggression. But the main aggression still to be done. Uh, we do see a Viking and some and a Banshee up. Uh, and the Ling's going on a counterattack across the map. I have quite a few of these. Looks like 22 and one control right here. And he'll be able to catch these units pretty unaware. And now he's scouted the Banshee as well as the impact from Massacre. This is not going well at all for the Terran player. A lot of aggression being put on, and will we get this last Marauder? It doesn't quite look like it, but a pretty good trade there for Eye of Darkness, up by 7 supply now. And uh, there's just not a whole lot of units left for the Terran player. And no real thought of Siege Tanks, which is the one unit that he could really use. Uh, we do see the plus one infantry weapons coming down, as well as more Marines and Marauders being churned out in another Banshee. But pretty soon we'll have those Mutalists out on the field. The Spire is right here, and about uh, 10 seconds away from being done. Baneling roll on the way as well, uh, so that they can see them rolling as well as hating. Uh, fun fact. Another Queen finishes as well uh, to help deter the Banshees. Getting that Overseer also very key, and Eye of Darkness looks very prepared for anything the Massacres might throw at it. I'm not quite sure why he's taking down these destructible rocks. He hasn't even taken it natural. Uh, and actually probably getting a little bit dry here. Yeah, not a whole lot of money left to be had on this one base. Finally building a command center about halfway done here. Let's see which base he opts to take. He's actually going to move out across the map with this uh, small amount of units. Uh, never mind, just checking for any lings or banelings that might be sn snuck into the base. Uh, I have Darkness over responding to things a little bit. There's seven spore crawlers on the way. Four in the main, three in the natural. Uh, and here comes the pack of mutas. I'm not sure he spotted it. Uh, there's only six, maybe eight of them. Uh, nope, seven, right in the middle, of course. Uh, and that turret's not going to get up in time. And there's not a whole lot of anti-air here. More er, SCVs going down by the handful. And he could just pick off a banshee or two and really save himself some hassle. He's going to get out. One muta does fall. Uh, but we do see seven workers killed, so very nice trade for him. And he'll be able to take out the Viking as well. It might get the Mutalist, it does. So two of the Mutas go down, so it's flocked down to five. Uh, but all in all, really nice harassment done. And we even see a nice stim taken out of those Marines. Um, <laughs> Marauders and Banshees just chilling out back in the back of the base. Like, we can shoot the Mutas, I promise. But the Mutas flying around in a big 31 supply lead, or 29, excuse me, supply lead for Eye of Darkness. He has supply blocks, that's why we see four Overlords in production. And Massacre's still going for kind of this odd style. Uh, it looks like he accidentally picked some moves up into a meta vax, and I was going to drop them back off. More Mutas being rallied across the map, and we'll have quite a large flock. It looks like uh, 12 of them right now. Back in. They could engage this Massacre without much problem. Uh, one Muta might fall there, it does, so he's down to 11 now. And the Marine's dimming in, he takes out quite a few of the Mutas. Not the best management there by Eye of Darkness. And uh, Massacrist slowly pulling back into this game. Uh, Eye of Darkness going for uh, the third base. Very good for Zerg players. If you have Mutalisks on the map, hide your expansions. Uh, because if the Terran army comes up here and starts attacking this, you know where his army isn't? At his base. We do see SCVs 
uh, being transferred down. I thought they might have been pulled there for a second, but uh, it's like Massacre's trying to get up. If we look at the economy, uh, we do see the Zerg player significantly ahead, 49 Harvesters to 25, but those mules keeping him in it in terms of minerals. Uh, 12 Banelings on the way, and it looks like Hawks, or, uh, Eye of Darkness is going to go for uh, some sort of very large bust at the front. <laughs> More Banelings, even. Uh, just to bring him to a ridiculous total, and I'm not sure Massacrist is quite ready for this. Uh, of the units here, not many of them are very good against Banelings except Banshees, uh, but the damage might already be done too late. Uh, we see the Banelings starting to get their roll on. <laughs> Has to be careful not to detonate on those destructible rocks. That could be disastrous. But both players just macroing up. We do see Burrow on the way, as well as uh, this base that'll function as his fourth base down here. Uh, actually taking out the destructible rocks. And uh, Flyer attacks level one on the way. This indicates that he wants to use his mutas more for harassing than as a general part of his army. If you want to use them as the army, you actually go for the carapace, which we see now. So these mutas will be fairly well upgraded. Uh, the Terran player, meanwhile, on, sitting on 1-1 one -one for his infantry. Uh, we do see the armory on the way. Whether that's just for upgrades or for stores is yet to be seen. Uh, because this factory has finished up, it does look like he's actually going to use it to scout, perhaps? I'm not sure I like this decision. Actually, there he goes. He's just finding more room for the tech lab. Uh, so we'll, we'll probably see a couple of Thors to try and deal with the Mutalisk flock, but it's not going to be in time. Here comes the move out, all vaguely on one hotkey. They're all, they're all separated, but all moving together. And uh, Eye of Darkness is going to scout that there's no base here. And here comes the big move in. Minions in the back, and he's going to get the big detonation here. Actually, the Marines do a nice job. They sit separately and run away. A couple of them get picked up into the medevac, but it's not going to be enough. These Mutalisks uh, now have free reign of the base, basically. And he's going to fall back, but has secured himself a gigantic advantage. Uh, no more workers killed, but if we look at the units lost tab, uh, I've been starting to pull ahead and has uh, four bases up to his opponents, too, rallying more mutalisks in here. Uh, this is a very nice looking flock of them at 14, and he'll be able to do. Uh, actually, he might just be able to kill his opponent outright with these mutalisks. There's only five marines up in this right here. He actually stiffs his rotters as well, although that's not really going to help them. Knife Darkness being a little bit cautious. Uh, maybe a little perturbed with that health so far, going to take down the missiles which are just annoying, <laughs> if nothing else, and targeting down uh, the reactor. A couple of marines do pop out trying to deal with these mutalists, but there just isn't much here, and uh, this looks like it's going to be GG. There's Massacrist, he does have a Thor now, though, and that Thor can... Ooh, a big hit on the mutas, and actually they're all going to go down. Kind of poor control there from Eye of Darkness, most of his Muta flock, uh, there's the rest of it. He's going to have to fly away, but only four, ooh, three survivors left. And Hero Thor flexing his muscles. Eight killed all of the Mutalisks. So really nicely done. That was timing by Massacrist, and it might not quite be over yet. But again, the Zerg player on four bases to the Terran players two. And if he can just get up a decent Link Daneling for us, he can go roll them. But I have Darkness playing a little bit cautiously, actually going for a Hydra Den and an infestation pit at the same time. So instead going to attack, there's a Rotor in as well. Uh, perhaps sensing that his opponent isn't going siege tanks, the Roach Hydra composition could do a lot of damage. Uh, the infestation pit might be for a hive tech, it might be to get some of those infestors as well. And uh, I looking a little bit gas starved, but has a, a huge resource fund for his kids to go to college. Mutalisk trying to poke around and uh, mostly just see if his opponent has a third base anywhere. Uh, that's the most important piece of information that he can have right now. If he can contain Massacrist on these two bases and not let him get a third, uh, the game is basically over. Uh, in just a couple minutes, we do see the Hive on the way, uh, as well as the Pathogen Glands research. <laughs> I all of a sudden looking even more gas-starved than he was. Uh, missile attacks level one on the way for his ground units. Getting some more gas geysers. And pretty standard stuff from Eye of Darkness. Up by 50 supply, but uh, that deficit going to shrink a little bit here as he's teching hard. And actually doesn't quite gather all of his mutilists. There he goes. So 12 of them going to move out uh, and just check for other bases around the map. The third base nearly finished here for Massacrist. 